you know what? I might have to do this again for I think I was on mute. Oh. So I think it was recorded. <laughs> Um, you know, the technology is a blessing and a curse. Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, in a nutshell, um, I'm going to provide a slide of summaries so they'll get to see everything that I just went over. And um, Jamie, can you um, here? I'm going to unmute you. Are you unmuted? I think I'm muted. Now we can hear you. OK, I'm going to mute you, though, because I got 100 children. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, is it okay if I just do a quick recap for Jamie? No, so, yeah. feels, um, so Jamie, what we were doing is Marissa and I met on Tuesday with Nikki Oyen and just kind of uh, recapped what the um, the summer rec program looked like in the past. And so what we decided is maybe make a couple of tweaks to see if it's something that we could revive for the summer. So here, here it would be in a nutshell is where we're at today. Nothing's promised. This is all still in preliminary phases and there's things that we need to work out. But um, one, it would be a Monday through Friday program. It'd be 1230 to five. Um, it would be a variety of, you know, swimming, field trips, activities, you know, weather permitting, that kind of thing. Um, we would probably have a director and then two um, helpers to the director to oversee it and then a variety of counselors. And um, that, that's that's it in a nutshell, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yep. And so I'm um, basically taking all the things that we're working with Summer Rec and, and implementing it and tweaking it and making it just a little bit better. And um, so we're just trying to uncover some um, obstacles that we have. Obviously, we have to secure transportation. So Marissa was going to talk to the school about buses. And then we were also going to talk about um, the indoor facility should we need it, which would be um, talking to the school about the old Baltic gym about availability over the summer. We are looking at four weeks in June, four weeks in July, um, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. So block A, block B, block A, block B. And then um, and then basically going through there as a pass through model. Maybe the city would um, provide the administrative expense to help facilitate the program. But then after that, all counselors and fees and activities, all of that would be a pass through expense to the citizens. So that's kind of where we're at right now for the afternoon program. Do you have any questions about that? No, sounds good. Okay. So the other idea that we had, and this is absolutely just spitballing, okay, because I know as a working parent, having a half day of activities is great, but then what do I do for the other half of the day? It's still an obstacle to overcome. What am I going to do for that? So um, what I was talking to Marissa about is when I was in Del Rapids, the Catholic school did like an enrichment program um, in the mornings. And what you could do is sign up for a variety of different activities. It was anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes, and it would be like in a 9, 10, and 11 o'clock block. And, you know, you could do geocaching. You could do, you know, the basics of soccer. You could do, um, you know, some craft. You could do a cooking class. I mean, it was depending on what was available. And, and what we were, um, you know, we understand that that's a heavy lift and it's not something that we could necessarily do all ourselves. But what we thought about doing is reaching out to a variety of different groups of people in Baltic that have, you know, similar like-minded goals. And we were thinking maybe partnering with the PTO, um, maybe your group, Jamie, with the Baltic Athletic Parents, um, maybe, you know, BAA having a T-ball thing, um, the, booster, um, the booster club to see if there's something that they would want to help with. Um, we were thinking Abby Pickett as a contact for fine arts or something along that line. Um, as far as um, we had a whole list of people that we thought um, we even extended it. We were thinking maybe we should talk to the churches about a vacation Bible study option. So it kind of just rolled all into one summer program. So that way parents could have a plan, you know, for the entire day. You know, now that would also... Um, the counselors come in for hurting the cats, right? Because everything we would have would have to be in the same vicinity, you know, like Heights, the school, you know, Murphy's Pond, you know, the old football field, you know, the old gym, that kind of thing. So it all have to be within walking distance for people. And then we'd have to obviously break kids out in different stuff like that. Um, as far as signing up, there's a lot of digital tools to be able to do something like that. Again, the city could help with the administration. That's where those top three would help with that. And um, and then all the money would be digitally signed up for the class sizes would be depending on activities, but we could do anything from, you know, like Jamie, when you were having your meeting, everybody was talking about basics. Um, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could have the basics of basketball or the basics of, 
pickleball or the, you know, the basics of soccer or t-ball, that kind of thing. So that way kids can kind of get a little taste of those types of things, but also offer, you know, fine arts things or non-athletic things for kids that maybe that isn't their game and, you know, just kind of go wide. Now that takes a heck of a lot more facilitation, but we thought if we um, partnered with existing parent groups, then maybe it's something we could pull off. So that's the stretch goal. That's the big, hairy, audacious goal. But really, the fundamental is the summer rec program. Am I missing anything? Nope. You can't cover it all. <laughs> do you have questions about that, Sally? Mm -mm. Okay. Jamie, do you have thoughts on that? Um, no, I don't have any questions. Um, I just, the only thing I have is um, if we want, I mean, if the, if we want more people to do it, yeah, I mean, you definitely need especially for the, I know they're looking for younger kid care. I mean, you definitely need like something in the morning because I know it's 1230 to five is great for like when my kids were, you know, 10, nine, 10, eight years old and they could walk up there. Um, but like parents are, I know from our standpoint of childcare, parents are really looking for somewhere for those five, six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds to go. So um, we found, or Marissa let us know that from a Sioux Falls swimming pass situation, the kids have to be at least seven. Otherwise, because okay. it's a 10 ratio, so the minimum age for the summer rec program, probably from that perspective, needs to be seven, because then you can have one to 10 for counselors. Once you get to six and under, then it has to be one to one. Okay. So the, yeah. the obstacle is really, you know, the, it, it's difficult to break under seven but we could handle seven and up. Yeah, okay, all right, that makes sense. And so, um, but I do think it would be really interesting to talk to these different groups to see what type of resources or interest or frankly appetite to be able to, you know, mm -hmm. for lack of a better phrase, throw something together, but really it's not reinventing the wheel because all, I mean, I have a call out to the Del Rapids Catholic School to see how they do it. So, or we could check with other programs to see how they do it and take a best practices of other cities and that that type of thing. But with the um, with the intense interest of parents looking for a sense of community, things for kids to do, um, you know, I think that this is something that might, you know, get us over the target, at least, you know, in, in, a, in a phased approach. I know that um, a couple of the aldermen are also looking to increase the amenities in our parks. I, I, I don't wanna overspeak because you know, nothing's done till it's done, but we are trying to figure out how to create some more um, things for kids to be able to do in town within our park structure. And so um, once we have a little more information on that, I'd be happy to, you know, share that as well, but I don't want to like share it now and then get people's hopes up and then to have it not happen. That's mm -hmm. not, that's not a good way to do things. So um, that's kind of where we're at. This was kind of the preliminary meeting. And so that's why we recorded it. And I'll have to edit out the first, you know, seven minutes. I was, <laughs> but um, but then what I can do is have that and have that recording available to everybody that was on the email list. We understand it was a very tight turn to do the meeting. Um, is there any other items we should consider? If would we have to be committed to that age group for the morning activities? Could since those aren't transportation and those aren't field trips and that kind of thing. Could those be open to a fuller age range? I, I I don't see why it couldn't, but the question is, is how do we get them from A to B? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we maybe, I, I don't, it's been a long time since I handled a group of five-year-olds. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know how that would be. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if there's a group that's willing to take that on, mm -hmm. I can see there might be a possibility for that as long as it was in the city and there was planned activities. Um, if there's a group that would like to help partner with the city, I would rather see somebody spearhead that with the support of the city rather than the city, so, you know, spearheading that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But I think if we find a group that's like, yeah, I want to take that on, then we can try to help with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jamie, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, I think if I mean, you had like once every two weeks, like an activity for that younger group to do, you know, I mean, whether they're being watched by, um, you know, child care centers or if they're being watched by, you know, high school kids or college kids, you know, they or, or you know, 
or just at home with their parents, I mean, that might be, I mean, a good opportunity for them to get out and do some stuff too and start taking advantage of the parks and recs. Activities. You know, Jamie, that's a really good point because I didn't think about that. Even just having coordinated activities that already have supervision, right? Yeah, might be interesting. Like, like if you were going to do like it's like if you were group coming, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you were going to do, you know, like a story time. Let's just say, I mean, like we go, we walk to the library all the time, but like you know, like a story time in the community gardens, or um, you know, if you were going to do a tee ball, you know, have the BAA come up and just do a little tee ball clinic. You know, break it into maybe a couple, you know, five and six year olds, five year olds from this time, six year olds from this time, you know, just just to get more community, I guess. Jamie, that's a great idea. I mean, seriously, that's I didn't and think it, of it that it way. It feels like it's training for those younger kids when they get older and old enough to go into summer rec that they know kind of what's expected of them behavior wise and that sort of thing if they've already participated in some of these other activities so maybe those particular activities for those age groups would be a larger group mm -hmm. you know doing kind of an informational organized activity you know and yeah. maybe those groups could be larger but it's a yeah i'm i'm totally open to that i think that it's it's savvy for the city to be focused on the afternoon but whatever mm -hmm. people are willing to step up to for the morning we would be open to do it um, I, I do believe we can make a compelling argument to the city to provide the administrative support for those rules that would last, you know, in a 40 hour position for the summer. I think that we can make a compelling argument for that. So if there are morning activities, we can offer that assistance mm -hmm. um, as well as the technology to support that. So someone doesn't feel like they're running it on their own. So if we just have the volunteers that are willing to help enact it, I think that would be phenomenal. And yeah. I tell you, well, that, then gets, I, I think you're right. The parents would be elated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it helps the parents too. And then, it, I mean, and then it gives them input of like, oh, this was awesome. Let's do this, or maybe we could try this next year, or you know, can we do something for? I mean, it was great for the five year olds. Can we pull in something for maybe the four year olds? Or you know, this didn't work so great for this group. You know, it just it it just opens a lot more community and gets more people involved. I think as long as we have a group that wants to spearhead it, whatever they would want that to look like, mm -hmm. um, I think that is a great option. It's a really great option. And so um, as far as looking at, I think it's an easier look for the afternoon and we'll we'll knock out those things and, and start publicizing that. Um, once we get those final answers and we can tweak the numbers and then I need to get approval from the council, which I would like to present to them in the January meeting and get approval for that. So that way we're like, Oh. going and um and then um for the morning programs it's when is the january of, meeting Deb? uh it's typically the second uh it would be the second, second january tuesday. second tuesday in january yeah. so i would say flagged for january 10th okay yeah that's that's what i would like to present to the council and see if they would be amenable to that um, and then again, it's going to be like, we don't know if it's going to be a part-time position because it's just going to be afternoons or if it's going to be a full-time position, we're still working on that. Would we approve the scope and breadth of this if we would need it is really kind of what I need. And, um, and then, you know, then it would be a matter of endearing the, the community leaders of these various parent groups to see how we can, um, gather them and, and make a value, you know, a value program for them. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I see nothing but upside because we have nothing now. So like you said, even if we do four and five year olds a once a week activity or a twice a week activity, you know, that still is way better than we have now. And I know as a babysitter, it was really great to have something to take the kids to, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to talk about swimming lessons. Um, we were also, um, in the past, we've talked to the city of Del Rapids specifically to have a two week block that we could bus kids for swimming lessons for Baltic. And so that would be something else that we would want to promote once we nail down transportation. And again, it would be the seven and up because that's what we would have to do. Um, and then um, we also talked about kids that are over 13. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'll need to go back, but I think swimming lessons, we actually opened it up to younger ages. Mm -hmm. Okay. The seven. Um, I guess to drive because there was kids. different ages. Yeah. I mean, you level it off in your swimming lessons, so that could be open to your younger kids, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, that'd be good as long as the babysitter was with them. If they, I mean, is that kind of how you did it? Where you have um, they never even had us go in there. It was like us 
dealt with the kids that were out there and then the other kids went into swimming lessons and then we bust them back. I mean, I think we can at least open it up to them. And then if it is up to the daycare provider to get them there, sure. if we're worried about the transportation yeah. piece of it, but. Yeah, my kids didn't do summer rec, but we did go during Baltic swim lessons. So I would drive my kids and. Cool. Yeah, they could be with the Baltic kids and do that. Kind of stuff, but, 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 yeah, yeah, that would be very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So swimming lessons would be another piece of this, but we'd have to figure out logistics of younger kids. Just to yeah, I think we could bus our summer rec kids, but when you get younger, you start worrying about booster seats and all those right. things. And you don't How do they do that in the um, in the school system? Uh, I know, like some of our kids have a booster for, but we take. I think we use separate vehicles. It's not on a bus. I'm not sure. No, yeah, there's not on bus vehicles. I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I. I think if you use, I think if you use a big bus, they're okay for car seats. I think that's the regulation. Um, at least it was in the past when I worked at like the um, Boys and Girls Club. If it's a big bus, they don't need car seats. Okay. If it's a okay. small bus or a van, then they need car seats. Well, the nice thing is that we're trying to get in front of this and we're trying to do it early enough that we can tweak these kinds of things. But I think that's probably some other questions that we need to answer on that. And um, what else am I forgetting? Oh, we talked about kids over the age of 13. If they wanted to get the swim pass and go to the Sioux Falls swimming pools, then that would be an option to them too, where they weren't necessarily part of summer rec, but they could get take advantage of the transportation to go swimming to have something to do. So that weird phase where you can't drive, you can't work, you can't, you know. So trying to take care of all the different age groups. Um, but like I said, this was like a pre preliminary spitball. Let's get the, let's just talk about it and what we think could be possible. And then from there, we can probably tweak it, but we'll just need to identify some people that want to have some skin in the game so we can try to nail down the details and then more importantly, get the information out to the public. So um, is there anything I'm missing? I don't think so. Jamie, I, just, go ahead. I just speak from, it sounds like a big load. Um, so I think we can for sure knock out the 12 to 5 or whatever time frame easily. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to take a lot of extra support to fill in those caps in the morning. Mm -hmm. But like I said, even if we start small and it's an activity that's once a week for kids, like, then we do that. But mm -hmm. yeah, but I told her that too. I don't mean, I'm like, it sounds all great. I just worry about getting commitment from everyone and being right. able to provide those different things. But I agree. I think shot. it would definitely take those groups to be committed to, we're going to take care of this week. And we're mm -hmm. going to take care of this week. And then it's just up to them where, again, like city supports, but doesn't have to be fully involved or whatever. And I said you could almost make it into a fundraising opportunity for them, too, if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like if the Booster Club wanted to do a basketball, a fundamental basketball game, you can charge kids $5. They don't, I mean, they bring right. skills, but you don't get it's not going to cost you anything to host it or kind of thing. So, well, and that's the beauty of those little mm -hmm. workshops, if you will, the enrichment mm -hmm. sessions is the cost would be cost of supplies and whether or not the teacher wants compensated for their time. And then capitalism, you know, dictates the interest yeah. and, and right. whether or not that was done well. And then obviously if somebody wants to sign up again, it was because the teacher was good. And, and if the experience wasn't that great, then people aren't going to sign up again. So those types of experiences may take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and that and it's going to take some trial and error because we've never done anything like this. But maybe we can learn from, you know, Del Rapids program and see if there's things that they learned, you know, that work out well. Another thing um, I think we talked about talking to the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, too, about maybe using that as a guide for activities, too, if we have some ideas. So um, we're talking to Haven at Del Rapids to sure. do a lot of those kind of things. Jessica at the bank here we used to. Run Haven, so she would be a good resource. Oh, that's good. We all know that. And then you know we can also look at grants and see if there's any funding available for these types of activities to help offset. And then offset um, a scholarship program was um, we were going to look into what type of scholarships we could go into for um, to help the families that maybe couldn't afford the cost. Mm -hmm. And so uh, not knowing what the cost is right now. Right. right. And so when we did a straight pass through, did all the expenses 40 hours a week for that kind of a support staff, 
it ended up, we figured with the cost of field trips and stuff like that, it'd be 150 bucks a week a kid, which we know is a heavy lift. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to figure out what could we do differently. And then I was doing the math in my head about it. What if the city offset this piece, then what does it translate to the parents? Because we want to make it economical. And that 150 was as full-time employees for every single person. Yeah. Sure. So if your counselors, if you ended up not having your morning, then it's just going to be your yeah. 1230 to five. So it would probably be more. That's Feasible that's a really thing. great point. We were literally going on the high end of like, what's the most yeah. it would cost, you know? So I think that's the biggest question in my mind is, what are we prepared to pay the counselors? Because I know that's been a, the, one of the biggest hangups with this whole thing in the past is not being able to get counselors. People, you know, the kids don't want to take a job here for $10 an hour when they can drive to the North Lake and Falls and get something for 17 an hour. So a couple of the things that we were thinking about is if we could roll this into their senior projects. So all of the students graduating from Baltic have to do a senior project. So if there's people, um, if there's juniors that are interested in elementary education or sports or, you know, something along that lines, this may fit into their senior project. And we could talk to Mark Rosenow about that. I'd actually mentioned it to him earlier in the year um, of would he ever entertain project-based community service as a senior project? And he said, absolutely. And um, so that's one option because then it's part of their project. And then um, also, I think it's educating them. If you work for this program, you're going to get a 1099 instead of a W-4. And so, you know, it's um, also the gas driving back and forth. There's that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a personal working for 10 bucks an hour on a 1099 is going to be a little bit different. You get, I mean, you get the cash back at the end, but mm -hmm. in this program, you get the cash up front and kids get that. So, um, but it's a lesson in, you know, taxes too, you know, if they, you know, in educating themselves about what that pay really looks like. So there, there is that, there is that. Um, also, we had talked about um, kids that are freshmen in college looking for something or sophomores that don't necessarily, you know, when you're, when you're building your um, degree, having applicable experience is always better on the resume. So if we had this opportunity, those people in the education field or the sports field could really take advantage of this. And it would be very appropriate for their overall goals. Yeah. So we thought if we got creative with how we targeted people, because we figured yeah. we would need maybe high end. We were doing high end Pollyanna. We would need 12 counselors. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, and so then if we mix that between juniors, seniors, freshmen, freshmen in college, maybe sophomores, you know, depending on what they wanted, we could we could do that. Um, if there was a team lead, it would probably be 15 bucks an hour, but we would have to be very clear about what their responsibilities were over someone that was a counselor that's $10 an hour, but then it creates a succession plan. Mm -hmm. And then we figured the director would probably be 20 bucks an hour just because they're going to have to put in about, if it's a full-time position, probably 400 hours in, over the summer or before and over the summer is what we are figuring. And so um, just trying to figure all that out. But again, it's also getting in front of it. If, if we get in front of it and we promote it appropriately and we target people that we think are good fits for it, then I think that we have a better shot of doing it. Because I know there's a lot of seniors that would love to knock out their mentoring time in the summer and have that done. And then they just do all the project points during the school year as opposed to having to get that mentoring time in the school year while doing all of the executables. So there's um, there's that. Speaking of my daughter trying to manage all that, and she <laughs> struggled. <laughs> yeah, I'll be interested. I mean, because when I was in high school and we started this position, I it was convenient for us because we were, like I said, we were at acceleration from 8 to 10, and then, you know, some type of open gym or workout, and then mm -hmm. you were able to just go to your job, this close job, um, and then it was able to work with your team, team camps or whatever that you might have during the day as well. Um, so I thought it was a good job for a high school kid. Granted, when I was in high school, we weren't competing for jobs that were paying. Mm -hmm. So I'll be curious on, but I think for director purposes, um, the people that I reached out just wondering if they would even be interested in the idea of it. Um, they all seemed relatively like they're open to it just because, like I said, adding something to your resume Um kind of gets you experience granted everyone i reached out to we're all in the education field so if that didn't work out then i don't know what plan b is but <laughs> yeah. yeah 
we thought we thought if we focused on that group of skill set, then that would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Just because it, you know, uh, I don't, I'm losing my words. I haven't had enough coffee this morning, <laughs> but it helps with their overall goals. Sure, their overall career goals. And you know what? You may be right. We may find that we aren't finding the staff, and then we have to limit the attendance. Yeah. But um, you know, it just depends on how we handle it. And I. I mean, my memory is foggy, and I was only vaguely involved working here in the building as the counselors were coming in and stuff that last year. But, um, you know, there were about four or five counselors. Yeah, and, well, there's and five. I was, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, that I was understand. it because there were no other counselors. So that was kind of the limit of how many kids they could have. So, and yeah, that I was, understand 12 is really that was how many years <laughs> ago. <Right. laughs> this is, I think I was working and there was about eight, but that included your director and we never had the head counselor position mm -hmm. yeah. and that but that was with 90 kids yeah no. well like i said we were being very Pollyanna, and like if we could have anything we want right. And both right. Sort of it, like and how would we do this and what would it work because my concern was having succession planning so whatever we did this year there are people that were that would come back next year mm -hmm. so it'd almost be like a junior training position so that way they can go into it next year you know, kind of a thing. Um, so that way we can ensure the success of the program mm -hmm. was really what I was, where my head was at. And so, but you're right, it's absolutely based on demand. Yeah, 100%. So um, are there any other thoughts we need to take? I think the sooner you get your least afternoon plans out to parents, the better. 100%. And then I think you just re you put it out there that there's job opportunity for the counselors. Get it to your the high school and let them know. Um, and just put a contingent on mm -hmm. like when we start hiring based off the number of kids that sign up too. Well, and then we can also uptick the sign up so that way we have some preliminary ideas. You know, and say hey, you know, as we you know fill the blocks, you know, kind of a thing. I know that people wanted to do like one week on, one week off. And I really feel strongly that they have to subscribe to a two block, two week block. So that way it can be easier on us. I mean, they pay mm -hmm. for that up front no matter what. And then from there, but now the morning programs, that would be more solicited based on interest. Right. And so that would be a little more in and out, but the afternoon program would be a little more solid. Yeah. But I think your very first position that you almost have to hire, or at least obviously your director, but your um I think you need to look in your bus drivers and all that stuff. Yeah, you had said that before. Yeah, if we don't have yeah. bus drivers, we're host. Great. So that would be your next position before even reaching out to the council sure. position. Mm -hmm. So some sense in water. Well, right. and we did include um, Randy on this, and I'll I'll definitely forward this link to everybody that we had originally thought of. So if when you get this email, if there's someone else that you can think of that you would benefit from you know watching this because i wanted to keep this meeting a little bit short at the most 60 minutes but since it's just us i think we can you know wrap it up pretty shortly here because people aren't going to sit and watch a whole meeting mm -hmm. right so if we make it short to the point i'll create a couple of visuals you know bullet pointing what we discussed then then if you just want to get it out to people and but in big bold letters say this is preliminarily yeah. in the decision <laughs> stage <laughs> this is not final we're working on it then i think that um it'll help us you know get to a, a place faster mm -hmm. so and i don't want to raise expectations and then disappoint people i want to make sure that we got it so sure. jamie do you have any other thoughts before we wrap up um no that sounds really good yeah i mean definitely get it out there from preliminary to let parents know because i mean i know a lot of them are already thinking about what they're going to do for the summer um yeah and even just if you attach the survey to it you know like what would be your interests you know what would you like to see for your interests you know, swimming lessons, I know is a huge demand. That's an awesome one. Um, and yeah, like going to Sioux Falls to the pool. I mean, I my kids participated in some. I mean, and Marissa knows they hate being in that gym. Sure. And it's okay. 100 degrees, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. as much things we can do as possible, I think it'd be awesome. Okay, perfect. Any other closing thoughts right now? I think if we take this in little nuggets and we just try to yeah. do the brick by brick, I want to have enough of this the obstacles put together for the January 11th meeting. So at least we can make, you know, a pitch mm -hmm. for either a part-time to full-time position that the city can help 
fund that piece. Mm -hmm. And um, so then we know we have someone we can count on for the program and then just go from there. I think I think we definitely count on the afternoon program, but then really partner with the other groups to see if we can make the morning programs come together some way, somehow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, Deborah, is it something that we can pitch into the park and rec um, activity? You know, is it something we can pitch to the board to put it into the budget of the parks and rec? It's possible. It's possible. I mean, I know. I mean, I know. I helped with the parks and rec in the past, um, and I know that was part of our thing was to get some more of those folks more to see. So. Okay, perfect. I I um I think I saw a list of a group of people once that were on Parks and Rec, but I really haven't seen anything since. And that was kind of That's Brendan's. Okay. Thing. But yeah, I mean, I'm totally open. We're trying to figure out where everything lands underneath, and so Parks yep, and yep. Rec might be the way to do it. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a good tie-in. I feel community-wise. So, awesome. Perfect. Well, thanks, guys, for your time. I sure appreciate it. I'll get some deliverables out to everybody, and then. Hopefully we can get some feedback from people and hopefully it'll be positive. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you're thinking? I think so. Perfect. Yep. Well, then this right. meeting is Thanks. adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.